Hey guys, my name's Colin and this is my review of the Nike Wild Horse 5 after 150 kilometers. Okay, so I've done about 150 kilometers in this sneaker. I'll just uh, pop up a couple of my Strava runs. I've taken these on a few different types of terrain as well, including the road and some extremely wet and muddy conditions. I have a pretty good idea now on how these perform. So let's get into the review and start out with the traction. Out of all the Nike Trail line, these definitely have the most amount of traction. As you can see here, there's quite a bit of lug traction here in the forefoot. And as you go on here into the heel, it maintains that as well as that rounded traction in the heel. I've taken this on a lot of trail, but also quite a bit of roads heading to the trails. It's holding up really good. And actually here you can, I don't know if you can see these X's. I'm not sure if they put that there specifically to tell how your traction's wearing down, but that's how I've been using it. In the forefoot toe area, they've already worn down quite a bit and you can't see the X's as well anymore, but up here you still can. So it's kind of a good way to keep track of how your traction is actually holding up. In comparison to the Pegasus 36 trail and the Terra Tiger 5, which I've both run in, I find that these have by far the best traction. So moving on to the cushion. So the cushion in the Wild Horse 5 is basically just a full length Phylon midsole with a Zoom Air unit in the heel. Nothing in the forefoot, but there is a rock plate. This is my first sneaker that actually had a rock plate in the midsole. You can definitely tell the uh, protection is there when running over rocks and roots and some tough terrain. But I do think that having that rock plate in the midsole does take away some of the comfort in the forefoot. And although the protection is there, with the rock plate, there's definitely a lack of forefoot cushion. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on what you like on your trail shoes. I still really enjoyed running in these, but it's not necessarily my favorite shoe to run in because of that lack of forefoot cushion. So moving on to the drop. So this is actually an eight millimeter drop from heel to forefoot. It's like a nice balance between going from the Terra Kiger, which is a four millimeter drop, all the way up to the Pegasus 36 Trail, which is more of your standard Nike running sneaker at a 10 millimeter drop. So these weigh in at 11 ounces for men's size nine. Not the lightest shoe, but not the heaviest either. For a trail shoe, it's not too bad. On foot, they actually don't feel heavy at all. And now moving on to the upper. The upper of the Wild Horse 5 is one of my favorites that I've run in. It's just, you can tell that it's tough and it's going to be durable. There's a lot of protection up front here in the forefoot all the way around into the midfoot here. It's kind of a thick mesh upper which is not a bad thing. It makes it really comfortable to slip your foot into. It has kind of a wider and thicker tongue than other Nike runners as well. A nice pull tab which is always a bonus. I didn't find these to be really overly hot either even though it seems to be a thicker upper than some of the other Nike runners. It also just has two fly wire loops here up towards the collar but then just some regular lace loops the rest of the way through. Even though it doesn't really look like it, it's actually a one booty upper, if you can kind of see that there. I find the upper just looks pretty cool too. There's a few different colorways in these that are kind of funky and they just look awesome. And I do find they look kind of good on foot as well. I'll show you a quick on foot look right here. Moving on to the fit, and these definitely fit true to size. I'm a 10 and a half and these fit just perfectly. There's, I wouldn't say like a huge amount of space in the forefoot, but I would say there's more space than most running sneakers, but it's still kind of a secure fit in the forefoot. You definitely have a good heel lockdown as well. And if you're someone that really likes to crank down on those laces, it takes a while to kind of break in this upper. Can't even tie your laces super tight at first, but after a little while, you can really get those laces tight. So the final verdict of the Nike Wild Horse 5 is I really like these and I enjoyed running in them, but I just haven't been running in them at all lately just because of that lack of four foot cushioning. They've kind of turned into like a hiking shoe for me. Almost always end up going to the Pegasus 36 trail over the Wild Horse 5. But if you don't mind that lack of four foot cushion, I really think that you'll be a huge fan of these. Also, if you're confused about what Nike trail shoe to go for, I did end up running a little bit in the Terra 
Eric Iger 5. So I have an idea of which one kind of suits what type of running that you're going to do. The Terek Kiger 5 wasn't necessarily for me, so I ended up sending that back. But if you're a fan of lightweight ground feel while still maintaining traction, a little bit of cushion, and a low four millimeter drop, then definitely go with the Terek Kiger 5. If you're a fan of protection, durability, and great traction, then the Nike Wild Horse 5 is a really great choice. If you're going for the most cushion, comfort, and similar feel to a road shoe, then you might want to go with the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail. So that's it guys. I hope you liked the review on the Nike Wild Horse 5 and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.